Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome back to the channel where today we do what? Today we do a, a number of examples. So I believe there are four or five very simple examples. I should have done it in the previous video, but I couldn't. Actually, I had to go somewhere. So that is why I was in a hurry and I just couldn't, you know, couldn't elongate the video that much. So anyways, we, we studied what the, the electrical energy output from a given hydro energy is through this equation and similarly the, the uh, electric power generated from the corresponding hydro power is this one where rho is the density capital V is the volume Q uh, G H, uh, is the gravitational force H is the height the potential head right so the energy units over here are watt second or joules so they are joules or watt seconds Similarly, over here the power you have rho again Q is the discharge over here where Q we said was the volume was the rate of flow which was the volume per unit time or this was also equal to the area times the speed fine so this, the, the 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 units of this is watts of this power so this is basically the electrical power and the electrical energy we are seeing this through the eta which is the conversion coefficient energy conversion coefficient or the overall efficiency of the system through which uh, at which that efficiency at which you know the the hydraulic power is being or the hydraulic energy is being converted into the corresponding electrical Yes, so these the book has got again some simpler examples, very simple examples. We'll try to just make a shorter video on this. So let's say we have what a hydroelectric generating station is supplied from a reservoir of capacity 5 into 10 to the power 6 cubic meters. So which means that this given is the volume which is what which is 5 into 10 to the power 6 cubic meters at a head of 200 meters so the potential head is also given which is 200 meters find the total energy available in kilowatt hours the energy available is unknown and this is unknown in kilowatt hours uh, if the overall efficiency of the system is 75 percent 75 percent so have a look uh, energy is unknown the kilowatt hours which means this is the unit for electrical uh, uh, energy so we have got eta rho we know this is for uh, the water is 1000 the volume is given gravitational force and h everything is un everything is given so which means what that the energy units would be what uh, it would be eta uh, which is 0 0.75 multiplied by rho which is 1000 multiplied by v which is 5 into 10 to the power 6 multiplied by g which is 9.81 multiplied by h which is 200 what would this come out to be so uh, well they have not written the the value anyways whatever this comes out to be for instance this is x this is x okay or if i don't write it as x so so this why am I writing it as x? Because this is in joules and joules is equivalent to watt seconds. This is equivalent to watt seconds. So we have to convert this watt second into kilowatt hours. So first to convert this watts into kilowatts, you divide this thing by 1000. You divide this thing which I named as x. So you divide it by 1000. So the kilowatt will become uh, the watts would be converted to kilowatts now right yes and similarly for hours what do you do is uh, to convert the second into hours you have to multiply it you have to divide this thing by 3600 and why is this by 3600 because an hour has got 60 minutes and each minute has got 60 seconds so an hour has got 3600 seconds so to convert the second into hour so this you have divided by 3600 and so this becomes your kilowatt hours which means now i will have the my final answer in in the kilowatt hours and that comes out to be 2.04 into 10 to the power 6 2.04 into 10 to the power 6 are the number of electrical units generated fine yes sir water for a hydroelectric station water for a hydroelectric station is obtained from a reservoir with a head of 100 meters 
with a head of 100 meters calculate the electrical energy generated per hour per cubic meter electrical energy generated per hour per cubic meter we'll take the discharge as one meter cube per second right for this per cubic meter uh, if the water hydraulic efficiency is 0.86 so the hydraulic efficiency is given as 0 0.86 and the electrical efficiency is given which is 0 0.92 which is 0 0.92 so have a look. So I told you if we're, if we're asked per hour per cubic meter, so we will take the discharge Q as what? As one meter cube per second, right? Yes. Similarly, eta in those two relations is the overall efficiency, which I told you would be then the product of the individual efficiencies, mechanical and uh, a hydraulic if given separately uh, electrical or whatever it is so you multiply it this comes out to be 0 0.79 now have a look we are given the discharge so uh, we will use the power relation if we are not we don't know about the volume so we'll use the power relation so the electrical power generated would be what the electrical power generated would be eta 0.79 rho which is 1000 and then you have what q which is uh, q is given 1 then you have g is 9.81 and h is 100 so this comes out to be what this comes out to be 775 into 10 to the power 3 watts this comes out to be 775 into 10 to the power 3 watts or you can write it in kilowatts so the power would come out to be 775 kilowatts now we are asked to find the energy units so energy is the power per unit time no sorry the power is the energy per unit time so which means that energy is the power into time so if energy is power into time so we are given the power and this power is for per hour so and we need the energy for per hour so which means that we multiply this power rating with what with the time of one hour so it is p multiplied with one hour so this implies that your energy would also be equal to 775 kilowatt hours is that fine is that clear it is Example. Next example. Calculate the average power in kilowatt that can be generated. The power is unknown in the units of kilowatt that can be generated in a hydroelectric project from the following data. So the catchment area. So over here you are not given the volume directly, you are given the catchment area which is 5 into 10 to the power 9 meters squared. You have a mean head of 30 meters. The annual rainfall is 1.25 meters rainfall and they have uh, written it over here by a factor f rainfall f is 1.25 meters this is annually yield factor k of 80 percent so i'm telling you about these things yield factor k is of 80 percent and overall efficiency of the system is 70 percent Right. Then you are asked if the load factor of the system is 40%. If the load factor is 40%, calculate the rating of the generators installed. So the rating of generators is unknown. Is that fine? It is. The area is given and the what other thing is given 
the rainfall is given so the rainfall is given in meters have a look this is meters squared we actually need is the volume we actually need is the volume so for volume what do you do is the volume of water is the catchment area multiplied with the rainfall in meters and multiplied with the yield factor now what is this accounting for so area is in meter squared this is basically the catchment area now the rainfall gives you basically the height you could say or the third missing dimension of this so this is also in meters and this accounts for the height this accounts for the height isn't it it is and then the yield factor so this gives you the absorption properties this is for the absorption properties of the soil absorption properties of the soil right yes sir so now you do the multiplications it is 5 into 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 1.25 multiplied 0 0.8 so the volume would come out to be how much the volume would come out to be 5 into 10 to the power 9 meter cube 5 into 10 to the power 9 meter cube now the volume is given so you have to go for the formula of what for the formula of electrical energy so if i go for the formula of electrical energy so my overall efficiency is also given which is 0 0.70 multiplied with rho which is 1000 multiplied with a v which is 5 into 10 to the power 9 multiplied with g which is 9.81 multiplied with h which is 30 this would give you joules or watt seconds divide it by 3600,000 to give you the units in kilowatt hours so this implies what that the energy units that you have over here are what are 2.86 into 10 to the power 8 kilowatt hours 2.86 into 10 to the power 8 kilowatt hours now this is the energy units that is being generated fine but we actually require is the power in kilowatts so the power is what the power unit are kilowatts which would be the energy units divided by time so this is basically the annual data so you have a 2.86 into 10 to the power 8 divided by the number of time the number of hours in a year is 8760 so you get what you get 324 32648 32648 kilowatts this is the average power that is being produced by the station now the rating of the generation is required the rating of the generator so for that i always tell you you need the maximum demand on the system and the maximum demand you find out through what through the load factor you can find it out over here so have a look at as my load factor is given load factor basically is the average load over the maximum demand so excuse the noise outside this is my little cousin you know once again so anyways the maximum demand comes out to be the the average load that is over here three two six four eight divided by the load factor which is a 40 percent so the maximum demand comes out to be uh maximum demand comes out to be eight one six two zero eight one six two zero kilowatts 81620 kilowatts so basically we do these calculations in megawatts so you say that this is approximately equal to 82 megawatts let's say so the size of the generator what would you suggest 
let's say the size that you are suggesting should be what should, can be an 85 megawatts or depending on your calculation it could be let's say a 90 megawatts also because this is your maximum demand so you have to go for a for a little bit of an reserve capacity as well fine yes sir example 2.10 Example, a hydroelectric power station has a reservoir area of 2.4 square kilometers and a capacity of this much. So area is given of the reservoir which is 2.4 square kilometers and a capacity of 5 into 10 to the power 6. So this is the volume which is 5 into 10 to the power 6 meter cubes the effective head of water is 100 meters uh, and the penstock turbine and generator efficiencies are so penstock has got the hydraulic efficiency so the hydraulic efficiency is given which is 0 0.95 then the turbine has got the mechanical efficiency which is 0 0.90 over here and then the generator has got the electrical efficiency which is given as 85 percent calculate the total energy that can be generated from this power station so number first thing that is unknown is the energy units and number second is if a load of 15,000 kilowatts has been supplied for three hours so load is a is 15,000 kilowatts for 3 hours. The time is 3 hours. So what do you have? Find the fall in the reservoir level. So the fall in reservoir level in unknown. Fall in reservoir level is unknown. Energy units you can find out directly. Can't you? You can. So the overall efficiency first would be the product of these three. Won't it be? It would be. And then you have a, a, a row. Row would be what? Uh, row is 1000 for water. Then you have uh, and the units of row are kilogram per meter cube. So row for water I will write over here is 1000 kilograms per meter cube. 1000 the volume is given where is it 5 into 10 to the power 6 meter cube and then g is 9.81 and h is how much 100 meters so and 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 this is in watt seconds so to, to, to convert it into kilowatt hours we divide it by a 3600,000. so the energy units comes out to be 989175 989175 kilowatt hours fine yes sir the next is the fall in the reservoir level so basically the level of the reservoir is given by 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 like this level of reservoir you could say is what it's the volume divided by the area volume divided by the area right volume divided by the area now why am i saying this because volume is area times volume is what length multiply breadth multiply height length width height right so area includes the length and the width so the level is the height so have a look the third one is over here so this is the, the dimensions for this would be meter for this is meter cube for this is meter square yes yes so you can find out the level of the reservoir by putting the values both are given which is 5 into 10 to the power 6 and divide by uh, area is 2.4 into 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 3 i believe it should be because the kilo uh, square kilometers so the kilo do, do not take the square i believe so anyways the book has just written it as a 6 so you you also check it out this is the basic 
basic uh, uh, rules i would just write it down over here while editing maybe or maybe if i forget so just let it be you know the basics you know this is square kilometers is given so i think the meter kilo do not take the square this is the basics well, you, you would know it better than me anyways so the level is a 2.083 meters level is 2.083 meters right yes now you need the kilowatt hours that are generated in three hours so so you need to know the energy generated in three hours why because the time is given that a time uh, is unknown is three hours right so the power is basically also given to you so the power is given is 15,000 kilowatts and multiply it with three so this would give you the kilowatt hours for the three hours so this would be 45,000 kilowatt hours right yes so if so if if this much kilowatt hours are generated that we studied uh, the the total hours if if this much that is nine eight nine one seven five kilowatt hours are generated so this implies what that the fall in reservoir level is how much is this much 2.083 meters so from here you can find out the falling level for one unit uh, can i go down a little will it be visible yes it will be so if this is for for this much unit so for one unit this implies fall for one unit would be how much fall for one unit would be oh, wait a minute this divided by this of course uh, uh would be 2.083 divided by yes of course so the fall for one unit would be 2.083 meters divided by these much units so 989175 right yes so this is for one unit but we need the fall in uh, but we need the fall for how many units for 45000 units so this implies what that the fall in level for 45,000 units would be what? Would be this much 2.083 divided by 989175 multiplied by multiplied by 45,000 and this comes out to be how much? This comes out to be 9.47 0 0.0947 meters 0 0.0947 meters or this is 9.47 centimeters is that fine it is so i believe i will finish this one over here i believe i will finish this one over here i hope this this is clear the volume you multiply the area with the annual rainfall multiply with the so this you can take the area multiply the potential head not the head the height or the level of the reservoir and the level of the reservoir the height is determined by the annual rainfall and with the annual rainfall you also have to include the yield factor or the precipitation factor uh, we also have a precipitation factor i believe these are both the same things uh, precipitation factor so you have to take this also into account which deals with not only storage but also some of them some of the water will be absorbed by the land or the soil so you also have to include that in your calculations anyways so i thought this would be a shorter video but this is about more than 20 minutes i believe so i actually uh, i intentionally kept my st speed slow over here anyway see you in the next video very soon till then take care goodbye